Albemarle Corporation is one of the largest providers of lithium for electric vehicle batteries in the world. The company has mines in Chile, Australia and also in the United States and in particular in Silver Peak in Nevada, not too far from the Tesla Gigafactory. This is the same area where Tesla planned to start its lithium extraction activity. So how did Albemarle, a leading company in the field, react at the announcement that Tesla will soon be a neighbor in extracting and processing lithium in Nevada? And what was the reaction to the announcement of the process Musk and his team introduced during Battery Day? Let's listen to the main announcements from Battery Day first. Um, uh, lithium is not like oil. There's a, a massive amount of it pretty much everywhere. Um, so, uh, in fact, there's, there's enough um, lithium in the United States to convert the entire United States fleet to electric. Like, the, all the cars in the United States, oh, there's like 300 million or something like that. Uh, every vehicle in the United States can be converted to electric using only lithium that is available in the United States. In general, Albemarle agrees with some of the statements made during Battery Day. But it is also true that mining is a complex, long-term, and resource-intense business. So, some of the enthusiasm should be taken into perspective, or with a pinch of salt, to stay in tune with Tesla lithium extraction idea. Take a listen. Uh, you know, we agree with the, the assertion from, from Tesla and Elon Musk that there's, there's a lot of lithium resident in the clays. In fact, that's the reason there's a resource in Silver Peak, Nevada. It's a closed basin surrounded by clay mountains. Geologically speaking, over millions of years, you've had the, con the gradual concentration through a very dry area, but some rainfall that gradually erodes the clay uh, and the lithium minerals off the mountainside, concentrates it in a closed basin, then you have evaporation, uh, given the dry and arid nature there, that's concentrating it. Same thing is very similar phenomenon to what's happened in Chile in a much richer way. And Chile is a little different because it has much more different geology, more volcanic in its nature, richer in lithium, but similar in Nevada. So we know there is lithium in the clays. The question is, how can we get to them? Musk has a simple solution to this issue. Um, uh, but it, it is important to say, like, okay, what is the smartest way to uh, take the ore and uh, extract the lithium and, and do so in an environmentally friendly way? Um, and we actually discovered a, again, looking at a sort of first principles physics standpoint, um, in, instead of just the way it's always been done, um, is we found that uh, we can actually use table salt, uh, sodium chloride, uh, to uh, basically ex extract the lithium from the ore. Um, and uh, th this is, nobody's done this before, uh, to the best of my knowledge, nobody's done this. Um, and it's a, a, a sort of, you know, all the elements are reusable. It's a, a very sustainable way of, of obtaining lithium. Simply mix clay with salt, put it in water, salt comes out with the lithium, done. I yeah, mean, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the part that has encountered the more skeptical reaction, not so much by Albemarle, but also by other industry experts, which consider Tesla lithium extraction solution more difficult to implement. Uh, lithium is, is, not, is an element that is, it's not in short supply. It's, it's, it's supply in a concentrated form is in short supply, if that makes sense. Meaning it's in the ocean water, but it's not at economic quantities to be able to extract from the ocean water. It is in clays, but not at the concentration level that it is in continental brines or in spodumene hard rock. So the, the trick with clays is understanding what technology can be brought to bear to overcome the inherent disadvantage of more dilute concentration as it sits in the clays in Nevada. We believe as the only operator, uh, uh, resource-based operator in the U.S. today and operating in Nevada in an area that is benefit, in a resource that has benefited from clays being resident, that we should look at more the lithium that got into the resource was, was natural. What synthetic ways we can get to the lithium in those clays, but it's going to take process technology. We've got a lot of different ways we extract lithium. We're going to have to bring that to bear to see if we can make a value tip at this point. Um, we, we cannot put a number on it. We cannot promise that it'll be there, but given the demand for lithium, we owe it to the industry to try and we're, we're the best position we believe to do it because we're the operator there in Nevada. Albemarle plans to double the production of lithium by 2025. Other companies have a presence in the region, and more are applying for a license. The problem is that it takes time to start a mining business. Even a company the size of Tesla, will take at least three years before it can see some results. 
Um, you know, it, it varies uh, whether you're talking about a brownfield or a greenfield site, but you're generally uh, on average somewhere in that three year period for, for an experienced operator. Um, for newer operators who may not have the well, first to market uh, coming in to, uh, as a newcomer, May, may, may have more process development to go through, may take them even longer than that. So the lead times aren't short, which then speaks to the importance of sustained economic return, right? You've got to either have the money raised, be able to raise money for your startup, or you've got to, for your existing business, earn a decent return on the business you have to fund that, that ongoing expansion. Sustainability in mining is also critical, as it presents risks and opportunities stemming from environmental and social pressures. There is no doubt about Musk's commitment to sustainability. Albemarle instead, has received some criticism because of the amount of water they consume for the traditional extraction process. Here are the comments from both sides. Um, and we actually, uh, uh, we, we, we actually got uh, rights to a, a lithium clay deposit in Nevada. Over um, 10,000 acres. Over yeah, 10,000 acres. Um, and then the, the nature of the mining is actually, I think, also very environmentally uh, sensitive in that we, we, we sort of take a chunk of dirt out of the ground, or remove the lithium, and then put the chunk of dirt back where it was. So it will look pretty much the same as before, uh, and it will not look like terrible, and yeah, it will be nice. So, uh, there's, a, there's a view that we evaporate, wa use a lot of water and evaporate it um, to, uh, to produce lithium. What we do is we extract a brine that's 10 times more brackish than ocean water, um, and has no other sustainable use through a very responsible set of pumping um, activities. So we monitor the ecosystems around the solar and we concentrate that in using solar evaporation, which from a CO2 footprint is far more sustainable than any other alternative. And because this is the, the source of lithium from a concentration standpoint in the world, we get a very high quality feedstock to make lithium carbonate from. Um, there is no water uh, used in the lithium brine production with the exception of water that's used for the employees who inhabit that area at the camp uh, and occasional washing of the equipment. That's, that's the water used for lithium production. The, the brine is, is what is evaporated. Um, and I think another important point to note, you know, the, 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 the Salar de Atacama is a natural ecosystem that replenishes itself, right? It is the driest place on earth. The surrounding mountains uh, track the rainfall and it's that constant erosion and recharging of the solar that, that creates the, the, the ongoing uh, sustainability of it and provides the resource that's so important for driving lithium. If you look historically, demand, demand is really based largely today on electric vehicles, but there's still a portion of demand, about 40%, that's in industrial markets. That took a real hit during 2020, a real slowdown in industrial demand, and of course, some closures on the, uh, on the electric vehicle side. Now, what we're seeing and have seen in the second half of the year and into this year is a tremendous recovery. Demand rebounded uh, significantly. November year-to-date sales in 2020, we don't have December yet, uh, but global sales were up 32% year over year. Uh, that's sort of putting us back on a trajectory that we had anticipated of what we view as a million metric tons uh, and we, we put this in a, a unit called lithium carbonate equivalents by 2025. That's off a of base of what we think in 2020 and when all the dust settles will be under 300,000 metric tons. So that's a, a, almost a fourfold growth um, in the next five years, which will continue um, in, from 25 to 30, we believe. So really strong growth we're seeing largely based on the back of incentives um, in Europe, China, and to a lesser degree in the U.S. Uh, following the pandemic to really incentivize ED growth.